Okay, so last week we started comparing Sonic and Friends to the animals they're based off of. Comparing their physical traits as well as their in-game abilities, all that good stuff. Today, what we're going to do is continue on from that. So if you've missed the last Science of, then check out the Science of Sonic the Hedgehog Part 1 in the card over here somewhere. Hello everybody and welcome to the Science of, where today we're continuing our exploration of Sonic and Pals and the differences between the anthropomorphic cast and their real world equivalents. Last time we took a look at the characters introduced in the 16 to 32 bit games and moving forward we'll be looking at the characters introduced in the 64 bit games, starting with Sonic Fighters in 1996 and finishing with the latest Sonic game Sonic Forces in 2017. Now unfortunately the characters introduced in Sonic the Fighters, Bean the Dynamite and Bark the Polar Bear are similar to Fang the Sniper, only really appearing in Sonic Fighters and a single boss fight in Sonic Mania, so there's not really enough to cover them in any great detail. Now, by this point, Sonic's friend group had been firmly established, but that doesn't mean there haven't been some great and not so great characters introduced as Sonic moved into 3D. But before we jump into the 3D Sonic games, I do need to quickly jump back into 2D Sonic characters, because I forgot someone who goes right alongside Ray the Armadillo. This is Ray, the Flying Squirrel, and immediately you may be thinking, who? Ray hasn't had that much representation in Sonic games, going so far as to have missing posters in the City Escape stage of Sonic Generations. Ray was introduced in 1993's Sega Sonic the Hedgehog, otherwise known as Sega Sonic Arcade. This game was an arcade spin-off of the original Sonic the Hedgehog and introduced Ray the Flying Squirrel alongside Sonic and Mighty the Armadillo. Since then, Ray's only other appearance was in Sonic Mania Plus, being reintroduced to Sonic fans alongside Mighty the Armadillo again. In terms of Ray's abilities, he has the same basic abilities as Sonic, being able to run fast and perform spin jumps, but besides that, Ray does have some exclusive abilities. First of all, he's able to use his tail like a third arm, using it to help him move along climbing bars. As well as this, Ray is able to glide, but unlike Knuckles who apparently glided using his dreadlocks, the more you know I guess, Ray's ability to glide is accurate to his real world equivalent. Flying squirrels, as the name suggests, are able to fly through the air, but it's not so much flying in the conventional sense, as squirrels, unlike birds, don't have their own means of propulsion to keep them airborne. Flying squirrels have a large furry membrane called a patagium, which connects their front and rear limbs at the wrist and ankles. When they leap from a tree, they spread their limbs out. This increases their surface area and turns them into sort of a miniature hang glider, allowing them to glide gently. They're even able to move around by raising and lowering their arms, thanks to a special piece of cartilage which extends out from their wrist. This is very similar to Ray's flying style. As you can see, when he glides, he spreads out his arms and his patagium spreads out, increasing his surface area and allowing him to glide gently. The only problem with Ray using his wings to fly is that his patagium only extends to his waist and not his ankles. This would impact his ability to glide pretty significantly, as the surface area produced when he spreads out his arms would be pretty small. He might be able to glide for a little bit, but no way near as long as he could in game. Okay, so now we're done with all 16 and 32 bit Sonic characters, so let's move right along to the 3D characters, starting out with Sonic Adventure on a Sega Dreamcast in 1998. This game mainly used the previously established Sonic cast, Sonic, Knuckles, Tails and Amy Rose, but it also took the opportunity to introduce some new characters, E102 Gamma and Big the Cat. Sadly, we can't really discuss Gamma because he's a robot, so I guess we should take a look at Big the Cat. But to soften the blow somewhat, we can also look at Sonic's other feline friend Blaze, introduced in 2005 Sonic Rush for the Nintendo DS. Now, these characters could not be more different physically, and naturally, this means that their abilities are equally different. Let's start off by looking at Big the Cat. Big, as the name suggests, is Sonic's largest character, and given that he's a giant blue striped cat, we can assume he's not based on any specific species. However, 
When looking at the biggest domesticated breed of cats, we find the Maine Coon. This breed of cat is positively giant compared to most cats and is also very strong, with well-developed muscles. This sort of links to Big's role as a strength character for Team Rose in Sonic Heroes. Big's abilities are pretty simple. In his original appearance in Sonic Adventure, Big spent most of his time fishing in an attempt to find his best friend Froggy. Now, for a moment, just ignore the fact that trying to impale a hook into the side of your best friend's cheek is probably the fastest way to lose friendship points. This is a pretty thin representation of the fact that cats like fish. Not really anything super deep there, but oh well, he was introduced in the 90s. Maybe they did a better job with Blaze. Now Blaze, as I said earlier, was introduced in the DS exclusive Sonic Rush and has always been depicted as being very graceful in her movements, being incredibly acrobatic and nimble. This works well for cats as they're pretty much built for balance. First of all, cats have an incredibly flexible spine, owing to them having more vertebrae than humans. This means they're more flexible than most creatures in fact, and partially responsible for the saying, a cat will always land on its feet. When cats fall, they're able to identify they're facing the wrong way due to highly sensitive vestibular systems in their ears. When this signals to the brain that the cat is upside down, they're able to rotate, starting with their head followed by their upper body until their whole body is facing downwards, allowing them to land gracefully on their feet. Moving on from Sonic's feline friends, we move on to 2001 Sonic Adventure 2. This game introduced two new characters, Shadow the Hedgehog and Rouge the Bat. We took a look at hedgehogs in the last video, so we won't bother covering Shadow. But what about Rouge? Well, Rouge is a bat, but she's got very distinct coloration, a white body with dark wings, which means that it's pretty easy to find a species to compare her to. The Honduran white bat is a tiny species of bat, found throughout Mexico and Central America being only between 3.7 and 4.7 centimeters in length. Rouge's main role in Sonic Adventure 2 was being the dark counterpart to Knuckles, and as such, she had very similar abilities, being able to glide and dig in search for pieces of the Master Chaos Emerald. Now, oddly enough, her real-world abilities work quite well as the inverse for Knuckles. Real bats are of course able to fly as a result of their wings. What they're not able to do is dig, so, with Knuckles and Rogue, we have a weird exchange in realism. Bats, to put it simply, do not have the physical ability to dig, and as such, will more often find their homes wherever they can. The Honduran white bat, for example, due to its small size, will often nest in fruit trees of the lowland rainforests, under their broad leaves. As well as these abilities, Rouge is able to climb on any surface when searching for pieces of the Master Chaos Emerald. Now, bats are pretty good at climbing owing to the hook-like nature of their claws, which let them get a good grip on most surfaces going both up and down, but this isn't flawless. I doubt, for example, that bats would be able to climb on some of the surfaces found in game, such as polished metal. And now we're into the PS2 era of Sonic games. By this point, Sega had abandoned producing their own consoles and had moved thoroughly into the realms of game development and publishing. With this, of course, came many Sonic games, and a few more experimental Sonic titles, such as 2009 Sonic Dash Quiz, Sonic and the Black Knight, and racing games such as 2010's Sonic All-Star Racing. But before this series, there was 2006's Sonic Riders, a Sonic hoverboard racing game which introduced the Babylon Rogues, three avian characters who were Team Sonic's main rivals as they race to stop Dr. Eggman from taking the treasure of ancient Babylonians or something. The Babylon Rogues are made up of Jet the Hawk, Wave the Swallow, and Storm the Albatross. Now, you may be thinking, if this group is from a racing game, how many abilities are there to discuss? None. There are no abilities to talk about. And besides their appearance in this game, they mainly appear as cameo roles. Maybe because Sonic Riders isn't the most popular Sonic series. But what we can talk about is their designs, and how they resemble the birds they're named after. Actually, this might be the best thing about the Babylon Rogues. Rather than just being named after generic species like all the other Sonic characters, we actually have specific breeds. Let's start with Jet, the leader of the Babylon Rogues. 
Jet is a hawk, a species of bird known for being pretty damn fast. The peregrine falcon, otherwise known as the duck hawk in North America, is the fastest bird in the world, being able to fly at speeds up to 390 km per hour. No wonder they decided to include him in a Sonic racing game. Wave, on the other hand, is the mechanic of the Babylon Rogues and is a swallow, specifically a blue and white barn swallow. Wave's hair looks like the elongated forktail of a swallow. These forktails increase the surface area of a bird's tail, and this increases the ratio of drag to lift when the swallow's in flight, meaning that they have a greater turning moment when compared to other avian species. Storm the Albatross is the muscle of the group, being one of the biggest characters in the Sonic cast, towering over the other Babylon rogues. This is pretty accurate for an albatross, which have a wingspan as wide as 3.3 meters in length. And having an albatross as the muscle of the group makes a lot of sense, as albatrosses are kind of bullies, engaging in what is known as kleptoparasitism. Kleptoparasites are animals that often steal food and prey from other animals. In the case of albatrosses, they steal food from other birds around their habitats, and is the only member of its phylogenetic order to do so. It's also worth noting that, out of all of the Babylon rogues, only two of them have the right colour of beak. Whilst albatrosses and hawks have yellow beaks, the barn swallow actually has a black beak. However, I can guess why they decided to keep it yellow across the board. As I said, a lack of gameplay really limits what can be said around the Babylon rogues, but it's nice to have some kind of visual representation of their breeds. Okay, so now we have to do a bit of a jump all the way to 2014 and the release of Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric, and the introduction of our final character in today's video, Styx the Badger. Styx has the normal, unusual coloration that many Sonic characters have, having orange and brown fur all over, but I will say, they did get the stripe down the face right. But what about her abilities? Well, besides the fact that badgers can't use boomerangs, Styx has a highly accurate sense of smell, which it's seen throughout the Sonic Boom TV series. This is definitely accurate to real world badgers, whose sense of smell is considered at least 700 times better than humans, using their sense of smell to help them find their ways around. This is required because badgers are nocturnal, and as such they have very poor eyesight, similar to other nocturnal species, bats, moles, and deep sea fish. Even Styx's acrobatic abilities and swiftness are not completely unheard of in badgers. Although you never see them flipping around, they are capable of running at bursts of 90 miles per hour. Definitely not the most realistic representation we've seen, but definitely not bad. Much like Sonic's pixel days, the new characters introduced for the 3D games were far from perfect representation of their zoological counterparts, but in many ways it's to be expected. At the end of the day, the Sonic series is a fun collection of games, so I'll take any similarities I can get. All characters have at least some accuracies, and that's far better than all of them being utterly fictional. Out of the characters we've looked at, I think the most accurate is probably Espio from Team Chaotix, whose abilities were very similar to that of a real chameleon, as well as having a somewhat realistic coloration. I will admit that Knuckles has some great accuracies too, as well as the Babylon Rogues, who would probably have won if not for their lack of representation throughout the series. Thanks for watching, and also thank you very much for helping me reach 100 subscribers. It may not be the biggest milestone, but I truly appreciate anyone and everyone who watches my videos. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, if you have any particular scientific subject or topic that you'd like to see me cover in the future, then please tell me in the comments down below. Or, if you'd rather, send me a message directly on Twitter. And if you're looking for more game-based content, then you can join me over on twitch.tv forward slash togglejam, where I stream games three times a week. Always a good time, and I love interacting with the community. If you want to support the channel even further, then you could also contribute to my Patreon. As a patron, you'll get behind the scenes access to the creation of all aspects of these videos, including script writing, editing, thumbnail design, and all assets I make for the show, as well as being able to vote on what the next Science of Video will be. But until then, this has been the Science of Sonic the Hedgehog. I'll see you next time.